Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am working with Phalaenopsis orchids in the house. And um, as house plants we have different challenges for orchids than growing them in the greenhouse. And one of the challenges is keeping these guys watered. Household humidity is much lower than in the greenhouse. Um, we're working with about 50%, 55% in my house. And yeah, what I find, you know, this is your sort of traditional fowl, and it does have a secondary spike coming. So as you can see, I cut it off here, and we have new buds coming up top here. Don't think anybody about to see that. They're kind of side, or they're kind of facing you. There we go. So you can see them there. But um, that's not what we're focused on today. Today we are focused on getting this guy rehydrated, because in the house they get so dry. So. I would never use these pots out in the greenhouse, but in the house, I really like them. They're great and they hold some humidity at the roots. Inside this pot, we have another little pot here. And this pot, I make sure I, I keep it sort of loose if I can, so I can inspect the roots pretty easily and make sure everything is going on good in there. You get the odd dried root in the house and these roots here tend to not be as plump because of the, the lack of humidity. But unfortunately, I'm not sure where the best way to show you this is. The media itself in this one is completely dried out. It's a media sphagnum moss, which I don't mind. Sphagnum you have to be very careful with because it can stay very wet, but it can also get very dry. So there's a little piece of sphagnum, and I'm going to put this up to the microphone for a second, and you can just hear what this stuff sounds like. I don't know if you're able to hear that crackling, but that is the sound of bone dry sphagnum moss. Now the trouble with it, when sphagnum moss gets bone dry, is when you go to rewater it, it actually, instead of absorbing water, it actually repels it. So if we pour it in here, it goes straight through. You see, I only poured the tiniest amount in there, like a tablespoon. And basically, a tablespoon comes back out. Now for a, a media that holds water, it's really tough to get this stuff rehydrated once it is bone dry like this. So what we need to do is actually let it sit for a while. So I'm going to put this guy right in the bowl, just like so. And I'm going to let it sit. We're going to pour water in the top still. Now this is just tap water. It's lukewarm and it has about 25 parts per million in it of total dissolved solids. So it's perfectly safe for orchids. But I find that we're gonna have to let this guy sit for a while in the media like this, just in order to actually get it to hydrate back up. It's gonna be a little bit of a process and we need it to hydrate back up from the bottom up. So I'm gonna probably leave this for five or 10 minutes and then we're gonna come back to it together. Okay, approximately 10 minutes has passed and we can see the orchid roots are now going a nice green color where in the previous shot they would have been almost a silvery color. Silver equals thirsty and green equals um, it watered basically. They're not thirsty anymore. So now that this, it, being it is sphagnum moss, it is going to be very wet in there. So we're going to have to be careful we don't rot any roots. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is let it actually drain for a bit. Don't just put it right back in this pot or else there's going to be a big pool in the bottom. We're going to let this sit on the cloth for about 10 more minutes and then we'll be safe to put it back into the pot itself. If you look at these poor roots here, again, I'm not used to growing in the house. We have a really sad leaf here. It's good suffering from a little bit of dehydration. It is one of the oldest leaves on the plants as well, but you can tell it's dehydrated because it's floppy and a little bit wrinkled there because I just haven't been able to keep up quite as much as I would like with these guys. So you can also see these aerial roots here, which believe it or not, I do get aerial roots even in 50% humidity, but they're pretty hurting by the time. There's not a nice growth tip on the end of that. You can see they're actually quite wrinkled in there as well. They're not um, one of the um, joys of growing in the house, I guess, right? So 
If it was in the greenhouse, this would be nice and flush. This one here below it, it's not looking too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, a little bit wrinkly down below, but we have a nice new growth point on it. It almost looks like a worm, like an earthworm. And um, it seems to be pretty healthy. Unfortunately, the further away from the media it gets, the, the less humidity there's going to be. Let me just back the camera back up here. You will um, be able to look at it better. But yeah, so they're kind of sad like that. I do try to keep as much tucked in these white pots as possible. And that somewhat helps. But then they still somewhat get crushed as well. If I was to leave just this pot out on the um, bar where I have this orchid, it would be dry so fast. And, you know, just I don't have time to look after one orchid with that much time, like, involved. So I have to make sure these pots can either be your friend or your foe. So in my case, with really light watering, this pot is my friend. I've now let it sit for a little bit of time. Normally I let it sit for a little bit longer, but um, it's now nice and moist in there. And this pot is going to contain all the humidity and give me a good extra week or so without watering this guy now that he's been fully rewatered. He should be good in my house for about 10 days to two weeks before he needs watering again. I bet you this time around he actually went a little bit longer even. But yeah, definitely possible to grow these guys in the house. As for lighting for this guy, now that we've talked a little bit about water, we just want dappled light. So you can see right here, he's sitting on the table, just in a tiny bit of sunlight. You can see a bit of shadow there. That's fine for him. He doesn't want to be in direct sun. Um, I have him off to the side about three feet from the window on my bar. He has an overhead light that gives him a little bit extra light in the evening. And other than that is just the ambient light. And as we showed you in the beginning, it is enough light to get him to re-bloom here. So we'll have him um, flowers in about a month's time, I guess. And other than that, you know, these guys make perfect house plants because Phalaenopsis orchids are comfortable in the exact same temperatures that we are. So as long as your house isn't too chilly for you, it's probably not going to be too chilly for the plant as well. They don't like it very cold just like us. Um, they like a little bit of warmth and a little bit of heat. And they're happy to go. So anyways, I hope you liked that video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching. Bye guys.